Hey, good morning everyone and welcome to episode 11 of the Twitter tutorial series. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to integrate JSON data into our Twitter application. Now, typically, uh, fetching JSON data involves a network request and then parsing out all of this response uh, into JSON using some kind of JSON library. So all that is not that difficult to do, but uh, what if there was an easier way to avoid all of that code? Because some of you guys already know it's very verbose. You have to type out a massive amount of code. So with the help of this third party library called Tron, we're going to make it very, very easy to implement JSON data. Now, the first question is probably uh, what you guys are asking. Uh, what does our JSON data look like? Well, I'm going to show you guys right here. So visit this URL uh, inside of whatever browser you want to use. I'm using Chrome right here, and I have api.letsbuild.app.com slash Twitter slash home. And I'm using this JSON view uh, plugin for the Chrome extension. And my JSON data looks like this. And so I have a couple of users, uh, Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow. And for the time being, we have an empty array of tweets. This might change for uh, some of you guys that are watching later on. So uh, our current application looks like this. And once we integrate all of this data, we will turn or transform our app into this right here. So we have Captain America, and Iron Man, and Black Widow for this block of users. So that's what our app needs to look like. And we're going to use, like I was mentioning earlier, this Tron library. So Tron is built on, let's see, built on top of Alamo Fire. And basically, it's a lightweight network abstraction layer. And uh, there's a lot of very, very good documentation here. And there's this overview section, which we will have to use later on. But first thing we want to do to start off today's video is to do something very, very easy, which is to just install the Tron pod, OK? And let me do that by going over here. Uh, let's see, clear out what we had earlier, ls and path. And I want to open up this pod file. Let me just open up pod file, fires up this notepad text edit guy. And here I'll just say pod and say Tron. So I'm going to quit this and uh, let's see, do I need the tag version? Let's see, what if I include the tag as well? Copy that and paste that there. Uh, quit and go back to the terminal, say pod, install. So with that configuration of that pod, we now have the installation of Alamo Fire, Swifty JSON, and Tron. So we're going to need to use these frameworks in our project to uh, fetch the JSON data. So I'm going to get this out of the way. Don't think I need the terminal anymore. And uh, let's start by visiting our project here. So if I run this, we get our application to fire up. And let me just expand these groups here. So let's see, home data source controller. And uh, this is our app right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is to, let's see, I want to do something very, very easy before we get started, because uh, implementing this is not all that simple. So, Let's see this right here. I'm going to comment out the home data source guy and say something like fetch home feed. And this method, let me just copy this, create a function down here. And uh, let's print one, two, three. Uh, so some of you guys are probably wondering why I always print one, two, three. Well, I print a lot of statements, even in my production application development lifecycle, just to make sure my code executes properly. So print123 is here, down in the console, we are printing, and then we get an empty uh, collection view right here. So it's empty because we've removed the home data source, obviously. So nothing is being rendered out in the collection view. So good stuff, good place to start off here. Now, let's see, what do we need from Tron? So uh, import Tron right here, and we also need to import this thing called Swifty JSON to help the integration out. And uh, let's see, what do we need to do here? So let's see, uh, duh, 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 get rid of this line, uh, start our JSON fetch here. And let's say, uh, typically you will use something called URL session dot shared and you know data tasks with completion, right? So this is a lot of code, so this is a lot of code. Let's use Tron instead. So we don't want to do all that. And uh, how do we start off using Tron? So if I bring back this browser here, 
Now, one thing that you guys will notice is that every time you need to learn a new framework or a new pod and how to use it, you really have to read the documentation somewhat carefully to get a feel for how the library works. So all the documentation is available here. And so we're going to create a Tron object and all this header building and res uh, response parsing. So instead of going through the documentation, I think it might be easier if I just walk you guys through a somewhat simple example as to how to get this framework up and running. Okay, so I'm gonna avoid the documentation for this video, but I do recommend that you guys read it. So the first thing we need to do is to create this Tron object right here, Tron, and this needs a base URL. And the base URL, let me just copy it from this browser guy, basically this chunk right here that ends at the .com, that's why they call it the base. And this requires a two uh, quotes right there and gets me the Tron object that I'll need. So with this Tron object, uh, let's see, what do I want to do with it? Well, Tron has this thing called request on it and it requires a path. So this guy, this request called, returns some kind of request object which looks like this, something like this. And uh, to get it to actually work, uh, Tron allows you to use this API request guy with this notation right here. So this notation is something called generics. And some of you guys probably don't know exactly how to use generics yet, but the way this works is you have to um, include the class type for the things that happen on success of your network request. And then this is the failure error response. So let me just type this all out and then you guys will start to understand how Tron works. So uh, I'm gonna say class home, and this needs to be a JSON decodable object like that. And for JSON decodable, you need to init with this JSON guy. And uh, in here, it will just print out, uh, now ready to parse JSON. And why don't we say this and new line, and also what exactly is this JSON guy coming into our init? Uh, init? Then next, we need the error object, which is this right here. For example, JSON error is my custom class. This also needs to be JSON decodable, which will also require this init. Let's see, required init was JSON and perhaps print uh, JSON error. So that's what that looks like. And now that we have this, these two objects inside of our class, I'm going to use this home guy, put it in here, and this JSON error, and put it in here. So this is, again, this is just generics. Maybe you guys can read up on Google on how, how generics work uh, for Swift. So with this request guy, let's just type this out, and I'll perhaps explain later what's going on. Perform with success right here. And then we get these two blocks. I'm hit enter for the success block and uh, enter for the failure block. So let's see, for the success, the object that gets returned to us is this home object right here. And I'm going to say print uh, successfully fetched our JSON objects right here. And for the failure case, I'm going to say err and uh, print, uh, let's see, failed to fetch JSON, dot, dot, dot. And uh, perhaps we'll print out the error as well. So there it is. If I run this, what will happen? So this is run this to see what this request does for us. And perhaps we'll get rid of the one, two, three printing as well. Okay, so a lot of stuff. And hopefully you guys can kind of see what's going on. All right. So down here we have good stuff. So it's always good to start off with the error case. And basically we are hitting this JSON error, which is this JSON error guy right here, that's what we're printing out. And then we also say fail to fetch JSON, giving us the uh, API error right here. So this is the error case. And the question is, why are, we, why are we running into the JSON error? Well, basically you see this right here. We're missing this path is what you call it. So I'm gonna copy that right there and paste that into this request path and bam, there we go. So running this now, we should be able to render out what our JSON object is going to look like. So run this, firing, and then it hits the fetch, and now it hits the JSON data properly inside of our console. And so now ready to parse JSON is right here in this home object, and uh, the JSON is just being printed out like this. 
So you see tweets and users, which is tweets down here and users up here. And we get all of this data inside of our uh, home initializer. That's what you would call it. And it all looks like that. Pretty straightforward so far. And so now how do we start to actually uh, massage this data into something that we can use for our uh, collection view? So let's start out with something very, 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 very simple first. So let's see, home is right here. And uh, if I just say this right here. So in order to play around with this JSON object, you can do something like JSON and uh, access the users array. So remember users is an array like that. I'm gonna say let array equals this. And that array is pretty much this array starting from there and ending right here. So all that information. So that gives me an array. And with the array, I can say for perhaps user JSON in this array guy. Uh, uh, let's see, execute this with these two braces. And in here, I need to use this bang. So I'm going to unsafely unwrap this for now. And inside of here, let's do something like print uh, user JSON. And uh, let's see, access something like name inside of our object. So I think you can access something called string value on here as well. So running this right now, we're going to loop through all of our JSON objects and just print out the name. So what we should be able to see is, uh, let me just see what this does for me. And we get Captain America, Black Widow, and Iron Man down here. And uh, that's basically the three character names we have here, right here, here, and there. And uh, you see how easily you can actually fetch a JSON with this Tron library. It just takes a couple of lines and we're kind of ready to start um, kind of transforming this stuff into our model objects that we need. Okay, so let's say we want to construct these user objects from this JSON set. Well, it's pretty easy if you just say something like let name equals this user JSON uh, name right here. And we actually need to take out the non-optional string value like that and let user name equals user JSON. Let's see, user name, which is that string value. Let's see, let bio. So I'm just looking at this stuff right here. We have bio, we have name, we have profile image URL and user name. Let's get the bio out as well. Let's see, bio and string value. And here we have these three pieces of information. Let me just create this user right here. And uh, user with this construction block. Remember user is this object here, which contains these four properties. And inside of the name, we're just going to put in name from above, username from above as well. And then bio text is just bio in this case. And this image, I'm just going to construct this empty image for now. So that kind of gives us our user. So down here, I can get rid of the print statement and say this perhaps prints user dot uh, username, right? And so what is that going to do for us? So right after all that JSON is printed out above, uh, we have a kind of a loop that creates all of our users for us down here and we get all their usernames uh, in kind of sequence. So how do I want to hold all of these users? Well, wouldn't it be nice if home contained this users array, uh, users like that. And inside of here, we actually need to instantiate or initialize this users array. So let me just get rid of the print statement and say perhaps var users, uh, user, let's see, I want to equal an empty user array here. And I want to say down here, print, uh, let's see, get rid of the print and say users.append. Uh, this user object I construct up here. And down here, why don't we say self.users equals this users array that we're constantly kind of just pumping users into it. Okay. All right, so good stuff. Running into this, what do we get for our application now? Hopefully the home guy will contain our list of users. So running this, you can't really tell, but it says successfully fetched our JSON objects, right? So down here is exactly where that print statement is uh, being executed. And why don't I just say print uh, home.users.count right here. So this home object is being uh, given to us through this parameter 
of the succession block. And running the app, we get the printing of three. So we have three users inside of our home object. So that's kind of how all of this stuff works. You can see that if I get rid of these print statements here and perhaps here, uh, doing this JSON fetching is really, really simple. You don't have to worry about URL session and NS JSON serializer. All that is handled for us. So one thing that's really, really powerful about this request object is that you can set a method on here. So I can think you can say dot post and then dot get and then dot delete. So some of you guys that know how uh, kind of um, transforming our request object works, we need to sometimes build out very, very complicated NS mutable URL requests uh, to get our network layer working. So this kind of avoids doing all that. All right, so let's see, what do we want to do here? Now you see our application is completely empty right now, right? We don't have a set of users. So instead of using this home object, uh, why don't we use something that we already have inside our, our app, which is this home data source guy. So instead of using home right here for the uh, JSON request, what if we instead passed it home data source and try to run? So the application says that we can't use home data source because it doesn't conform to this JSON decodable protocol like home does. So let me just copy over JSON decodable paste it inside of this right here. And we can't exactly do this yet because we don't have Tron, so Tron. And we also need Swifty JSON because that's how all this stuff works. And uh, we have this right here. So it's saying that I don't have this protocol conformed right now. And let's take the code in here. I'm just gonna copy that, go back to home data source and take a look at what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to wipe out all of this manual user construction and just use the uh, initializer for the JSON decodable protocol and paste that in there. And we have this users, users array and then we have all of the code from the previous home object. So running this now, we should be able to get something similar in the console. So I'm just running all of this uh, one step at a time to make sure you guys kind of see what's going on step by step. So we have three right here. And uh, now we can do something like this. So home right here inside of this fetch home feed. Uh, this is not a home anymore. It's actually home data source. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but we're gonna be a little more consistent with our variable names. Looks like that. And home data source has all of the properties like tweets and all the cell for uh, index path, cell classes. It has all those properties on it. So what does this mean for our collection view? Well, if we say self dot uh, data source equals home data source again, uh, we can just run the app right now. So remember inside of view to load right here, we set up this home data source and then we set it to self dot data source and we're doing the exact same thing inside of our fetch home feed right here. So fetch home on success, we do some print statements and then we set up the entire data source inside of our app, which now makes it look like Captain America, Iron Man and Black Widow. So all this stuff is pretty, uh, pretty nifty for us to integrate all of this data from an external JSON source. So let's see, how am I doing on time here? What do I want to show you guys? So we have an empty image on the left and perhaps we'll fix that later on. I think I've gone through enough JSON coding for you guys to kind of uh, catch up on for this entire video. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys can see how much easier it is to use a third-party JSON library to actually parse our JSON into some usable model object. All right, remember the source code is available down in the description below. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed today's content and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, we're gonna look at how to easily uh, render out the images for each one of these users and perhaps look at things like singletons and completion blocks. And that's going to be it for me today. Keep on coding guys and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye.